Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is how to make a third person platformer in Unity and welcome to episode 13. So this time we're going to carry on with our pause menu, create a couple of buttons on there so they actually make sense rather than just this little uh, screen we have. And we'll also look at some fade screens. So let's first of all go to our pause menu and turn it on. Now, since the last episode, I decided the pause menu itself was a little bit trans too transparent. I kind of changed the alpha on it and changed the color of it a little bit, but it's up to you how you want it to look. So I may change it to a bit of a blue color, make it deeper. And what we're going to do is let's make this a little bit more interesting. So pause menu, let's add in some buttons. So right click, uh, UI and button. The first button itself is going to be the resume game button. So let's change the text to resume game. Uh, let's have the better font on it. So drag and drop font onto there. Let's have size 20. Uh, text white and center everything. Make button uh, bigger, I think, as well, because it's a little bit small. So I'm going to put that about there. Change the normal color to zero alpha. And highlight a color I'm going to have as black. Uh, press color, disable color, doesn't matter too much, they can stay the same. Right click, rename, resume button. Hold control, press D, uh, F2. Let's call this restart button. And let's bring it down to about there. Change the text to say restart level. And then finally, hold control, press D, and let's have this one down here, which just says quit to menu. So let's change the text. Quit to menu, and let's F2, rename it, quit button. So let's get these buttons actually working. So let's go to our scripts again, our pause game script. And we're going to create three extra methods to attach to each button. So we're going to go after our void update and have public void resume game. So you know why we have it public. It's because we need to put this onto a button. And what we need to do is firstly take everything here within the else statement. Because remember, the else statement was if we press escape again to unpause the game. The resume button does the exact same thing. So we can just paste that in there. Next thing, hold control and C and copy everything there. Paste the method down there and let's call this restart level. Now the idea of what we're going to do is change our level back to the original level that loads us into everywhere, the redirect to level. So because we're doing that, we need to add into the namespace using Unity Engine, if I spell it right, Engine dot scene management semicolon. So then after all this, scene manager dot load scene and in brackets two because that's our redirect screen semicolon. And finally, we can copy that whole method once again, rename it, quit to uh, menu, it is, isn't it? Quit to menu, and the scene is one. And save that script, and then head back to Unity. So now all we've got to do is assign that to the buttons. So, first button, resume button, drag and drop, oops. Nope, not drag and drop because we need to click plus first and then drag and drop our pause object. No function, pause game, resume game. Same with the others. We've we've dealt with the buttons before, don't we? So I don't need to explain again how to use these buttons. We know how to do it. Uh, so that's restart. And then finally, the quit button. Over there, the function, pause and quit. Uh, next, what we'll do is before we test these buttons out, let's add a little jingle into the actual menu button. So I'm going to go to the camera up here and I've already added in pause jingle up here. So all it is is just empty game object with audio source attached. 
So just to show you what I did, I held control, press D to duplicate level audio and pause jingle. The reason that's there, guys, is because I usually test these things before I record and I've accidentally left that over from testing. But not to worry. So we just drag and drop the pause game jingle. And this is available on the website if you head over there, downloads and assets. Drag and drop onto audio clip, untick, awake and loop. Volume, I'm going to have as one. Now, if we head back to our script, let's add that in. So you can see here, I've added it in there. Pause jingle again, left over from testing. So it's a case of adding in the audio source as a, a variable there. And pause jingle dot play has been added here. So when we pause the game, when we press the right button, pause jingle dot play. Oh, close bracket, semicolon, and save. So now all we have to do is wonder why that disappeared there. Uh, on our pause object, just add in the pause jingle to there. Let's turn off our pause menu, save the scene, and press play. So I'm going to go over here, collect a gem, and pause. You can hear that pause right there. So let's let's resume game. Excellent. Let's carry on. So now let's let's restart the level. There we go. You can see everything is reset within the level. And now let's go back to the menu. Perfect. Back into the main menu. So our pausing works. One thing we're going to do before we carry on is I did notice at the end of, was it last tutorial? Uh, the finish load script, uh, finish game trigger, there we are. So on here, if we go on finish level, I need to turn off the box collider because we constantly triggered the ending sequence. So in, on, uh, sorry, on trigger enter down here in the void, uh, get component in spiky brackets, box Collider, open close bracket, dot enabled, equals false, semicolon, and save. That will stop us triggering the end sequence over and over and over again. So next thing we're going to have a look at is fade screens. So let's go to game object, UI, raw image, and let's stretch it down here. And it's really, really easy doing a fade screen. A lot easier than you would think. F2. Fade in. I'm going to change the color to black. And I'm going to zero out all the positions so as it stretches the entire screen. Right there. And in animations here, animation, create, let's call it fade in. And then we press record. And frame zero. That's our first keyframe. We want the alpha to be 255. So 255 means it's entirely full. So by the, let's say, fade over a second, so 60th frame, we want the alpha to be zero. That means it's completely see-through, transparent. Press the record button to stop that. Head back to our project and find fade in and untick loop time and press play. Perfect. That's how we fade in. So let's do the opposite for fade out. So game object, UI, raw image. Oops, helps if I actually type it. Fade out. Do the same again. Stretch. I'm going to have it black. You obviously don't have to have it black. It's just what I would like. You can have it whatever color you want. Uh, I'm going to turn fade in off and turn the alpha to zero on oh not on that one on fade out the out sorry the alpha should be zero so obviously we do the absolute inverse of that so animation create fade out press record frame zero so rather than be 255 we have zero so let's retype zero to set that first keyframe so by one second, which is 60 frames, alpha, 255. 
Close that, stop the recording, fade out, and change loop time off. So now, if we press play, we should fade to a black screen. Perfect. So now we need to put these in context. So fade in needs to be turned on, fade out needs to be turned off. In our level load script, let's define that variable. So public game object, uh, let's call it fade in, semicolon. And what we need to do is do um, and I enumerate it here because we need to actually wait in the game time. So we'll have I enumerator fade in off. Open close bracket, open curly bracket. And we're waiting for 60, um, sorry, 60 frames, which is a second. So we need to go yield, return new, wait for seconds, and in brackets, one semicolon and then it's going to be fade in dot set active false semicolon and then obviously we need to start the coroutine in void start so start co routine fade in off oh close bracket close bracket semicolon and save the reason we have to turn it off is because if the object is still on, it may prevent us from actually using things like the pause menu as we would want to. So we have to actually turn it off. So load level, so fade in goes into there. And if we press play, we should see fade in turn off when it's finished. Perfect. So now let's use that fade out on our finished game. So on here on finished level, let's open it up. Now we already have the I enumerator right here. So after we've calculated our score, we've waited for a second. Let's wait, make that two seconds. And then let's add another game object. So public game object and fade out semicolon. So at this point, it's fade out dot set active true semicolon and save and then yep you've guessed it we just need to drag and drop that over here save our scene and let's try this whole sequence of events of fading perfect so hopefully we should be able to get to our finish and everything should work excellent so Next episode, what we're going to do is we're going to add in a couple of different gems, and that should pretty much be our first level complete. And what we can do from there is create more levels using the same basis, and we'll look at sequencing as well from level to level. So, guys, until that next episode, thank you very much for watching.